you do everyone. The great true stories are very often about the feelings of men facing death. And yet, there is one kind of man among us whom we would not permit to display fear at what might take place after death. And this, of course, would be any minister of the gospel who had preached immortality. No man wants to die, and yet, what if such a man had to practice what he preached side by side with men who were by no means certain even of survival, much less immortality. Now, absurdly enough, the most important clue to this story is one of these tiny rubber balls, such as a little girl will use to play jacks with. And we have titled the story, The Jumping Parson. During the Second World War, tens of thousands of young men learned to hurl their bodies into space. In newsreels, the sight of a sky full of parachutes became a commonplace scene. To no man suspended below the silk or nylon did it ever seem commonplace, but was a moment of crucifixion. One man learned this very well. Great job I'm doing. In five weeks, I've really built up a congregation. Three men. I've seen bigger crowds watching somebody change a tire. Ray, we went through this in Lowell But and... this isn't Lowell. A month up there didn't make any difference. But these men train four weeks and they're gone. I've got to reach them quickly or not at all. Maybe a month isn't enough. It's got to be. I've got to show them that faith makes a man a better soldier. If I can't, I'm a failure. If I'm wrong, my whole life is a lie. You know you're not wrong. Yes, but they're the ones who have to know it. I'll see you later. All right, dear. Daddy, can I go? No, son, I'm going over to the barracks. As you were. Good fumble, sir. I've had practice. My name's Hall. Oh, I don't mind germs. They come to chapel every Sunday. Jeffcoat, sir. Nice to know you, Jeffcoat. Anybody around? Inside, sir. Hey, Cracker, want to go into town? And give this up? We'll give you extra duty. Sergeant Grant. You know I never did cotton to folks named Grant. You don't know how much you love me once we get started. Tell him, Wilcox. Tell him exactly what... Dan Chuck! Yes. Hi, man. Service is over already, sir. I keep forgetting to set the alarm. How's the neck, Wilcox? Coming along fine, sir. Thursday, they take off the saddle. Where are they shipping you? No place. I put in for the new class. You cracked up on the tower. You know what'll happen to you if you go up in a plane? Anybody else want to catch? Oh, sorry, Chaplain. It's okay. Don't you ever get tired? You wouldn't dare. Daddy wouldn't like it. He in the new class, too? That's Babe Jeffcoat from Ohio State. His papa was all American. He's got umpteen million bucks now. Babe's still a nice guy. But he's in the wrong outfit. Can't a paratrooper be a nice guy? Sure, sir. Just as soon as we start fighting nice Nazis. You guys got to practice more in jumping. You got to practice hating. Sir, maybe that's the reason we don't come to chapel. We're in the business to hate thy neighbor. You can't build with hate, Grant. I do. I turn out the best paratroopers at Fort Benny. They could be better. How? With faith. We've got faith, sir. Faith in ourselves. If we want anything from God, we ask him direct. We're a lot closer to him than you are, sir. About 1,500 feet. Excuse me, sir.
Okay, next three. That tower is 250 feet high. And we've already had two guys chicken out this morning. Any of you want to join them? Okay. Here, look at them. Just plain rubber balls. You hold them in your left hand, you return them to me after the jump. Now, this is no game. The Army wants to make sure you're under complete control during the jump. Otherwise, we'll wash you out before you get a chance to kill yourself. You ready on the tower? Ready on the tower. Okay, go ahead. Good luck. Then chunk! Well, as you were. Morning, Sergeant. Good morning, sir. I've been out here watching you the last few days, Grant. You do a great job. Thank you, sir. I understand you're from Oklahoma City. Yes, sir. Oh, nice place. I was there once myself. Had a Look, great... sir, not every GI is lonely. My morale's great. What have you got against chaplains? Nothing, sir. It's not your fault they shipped you out here. Excuse me, sir. Like most men, Chaplain Hall could come to a decision which seemed right, and like most men, he would be obliged to bring this before his wife. But, Ray, you can't. You just can't do it. But I've got to. Don't you see to them I'm not a soldier. I'm a civilian in uniform, a spectator. I know, Ray, but... Look, if I go through training with them, if I jump with them, if I'm one of them, I can. Ray, this isn't like you. You're not facing facts. In July, you'll be 34. Oh, they'll give me a waiver. The Army can ignore your age, but they can't change it. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm an old man. I didn't say that. Mary, with all the physical training in the world, some of these men will panic when they hit combat. I've seen other men panic in strange, terrible situations. But I've seen this, too, and so have you. The ones with faith bounce back into stride. In combat, that can be the difference between living and dying. My job is to give them that faith, that, that extra shot of confidence. And if one man comes back from this war alive because of me, does it matter what I go through? Ray, I... What? Nothing. Mary, what is it? I'd rather not say it. Why? Because I love you. Mary, don't let it eat away inside. Say it, please. I'm trying to think of the right words. You can't go through that school. You know it. You know why you've never been on a plane in your life. You know what happens when you even go near a high window. Oh, it's not your fault. But those are things you've got to face. Oh, Ray, I'm sorry. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. You love me too much to use the right word. Oh, it's true, Mary. I'm scared to death even thinking about what the next four weeks will be like. So Chaplain Hall, sky pilot, prepared to trust himself to that sky, a matter requiring something more of a man than words of inspiration. Today, you heroes begin four of the toughest weeks of your life. Some of you may not make it. But do the Army and yourself a big favor. Wash out quick. Left face! Forward, punch! The parachute jumper's dream is a nightmare dealing with the one improperly packed mass of silk that does not open. He begins to wisecrack constantly and nervously, but his hands shake as he folds the giant umbrellas. The violent exercise of the muscles seems easy and safe, but in his dreams he continues folding and refolding the pack. He cheerfully swarms up over the jungle gym. He clambers up the ropes with his powerful muscles tingling, but continues to dream of a chute that might not open while he hangs helpless as a puppet, awaiting the earth's blow on the bottom of his feet. Are you all right? 
somehow you survived the first two weeks. heroes move out. Papa's boy didn't hurt himself, did he? You have anything for me, sir? Yes, sir. It's cold up there. Freezing. How'd you do? All right, I guess. I came down. Who gave you men rest? You're here to look and to listen. I'd like to break every bone in his body. You want to get court-martialed? Why does he have to keep yakking about my father? Because you bite. Pay him no mind and he'll quit. He keeps talking about Wilcox breaking his neck. Why does he have to keep yakking about guys getting hurt? He's gonna... He's coming this way. I remember the day I got it. I was coming down kind of quick and... Shut up. One more guy forgot to listen. Carter. His old man's got scrapbooks too. Too bad he didn't land on them. He pulled your trick. Came down stiff as a board. And he wasn't as lucky as you. It's his back. Okay, you heroes, next three for the hospital. Natural terror will stiffen a man's body 
But the paratrooper is not allowed this. He must relax lest he break like a brittle log. If two days of graduation are allowed, it's good luck to jump on the first and have 24 hours less to wait and think about it. Of the two men, athlete and chaplain, Jeff Coat was the luckier. We're nearing the jump area. later, the name of star athlete Jeff Coat was once more on everyone's lips, for he was now packing to go. Babe, I just heard about Get it. out, will you? Get out and let me alone. I froze. Me! I looked down, I got dizzy, I... I couldn't see, I couldn't move. You know what it's like up there? No, I don't. All of a sudden, your insides are bouncing. You, you can't breathe, you get dizzy. You know if you jump, you'll get killed. The chute will never open. It looks like a million miles down. I understand. My old man will never understand. I tried to tell him. Think it made any difference? He made me come out here like he made me go out for football. He's going to be proud of me if it kills me. Well, I'm through. If he wants a hero, let him buy one. Babe, maybe if I call him. No. No, no favors. Not from you or him or anyone else. Just get out and let me alone. Okay, babe. Yes, sir. I've been looking all over for you, sir. Your house, the hospital. The... What is it? Tomorrow, I... I'm supposed to jump from the plane. You've got to get me out. Call the Major. Tell him I can't jump. Tell him I'm sick. Tell him anything. Please call him, sir. Just call him. Get me out. If Babe couldn't, I'll never be able to. But you're not Jeff Cole. Please, sir. I don't want a chicken in front of the guys. And I will. I'll freeze. I'm scared. I'm scared, too. We both jumped tomorrow. I've never been this scared. Come on, we'll pray. I can't. Sir, I... I've never been in a church. I don't even know how to pray. Let's try it together.
God. Wilcox and I are scared. We're going to make our first jump tomorrow, and we don't know what it'll be like. Help us to give our best. Give us the guts to do this. The courage is in us, but we need your help. Amen. Washout special, now loading on runway three. Chaplain Hall, may I speak to you for a minute? What do you want to tell me, the same thing you told Jeff Coat yesterday? And I thought you'd understand. Don't you see Jeff Coat couldn't take it? I washed him out quick before he froze in combat and killed himself. There are 15 men in there. The book says three of them will be killed in combat. One out of five. I'd like to prove the book is wrong. My platoon is going to beat those odds. I've got a lousy job. I didn't ask for it. But I'm going to do the best I can. I train the best paratroopers at Benning. Any message for your wife, sir? I'll see her before you will. of a sky full of parachutes became a commonplace scene. And to no man suspended below the silk or nylon did it ever seem commonplace, but was a moment of crucifixion. One man learned this very well. Our footnote is a living man this time. And after the announcement, I should like to bring him before you. In our brief story, of course, we could not begin to do justice to men passing through the supreme hour of their lives. So we are most honored to have with us our jumping parson, Dr. Hall. And perhaps you might tell us what it was that helped you the most. Yes, I certainly can. Uh, and it will take one word and that's prayer. I was tremendously impressed with the scene in the story where Sergeant Wilcox and I kneeled to say our prayers together the night before we made our first jump, and that's very real. I found out I had to say my prayers often, not only in the training, but all through the war, and I don't think I would have ever survived had it not been for prayer. And I'm very certain this is one footnote to which I shall have nothing to add. Thank you, sir, for being with us.